This project can potentially contain high levels of voltages that are stored in the capacitor. If you're not sure what you're doing, please contact a professional. The simple bench power supply that uh, I parted from a desktop computer um, can be used to power up DC motors for an Arduino, um, op amps, or other current hungry components that you have lying around. According to the data sheet, this particular uh, power supply unit is 400 watts and can provide 30 amps on, a th on the 3.3 volt rail, 38 amps on the 5 volt rail, and 25 amps on the 12 volt rail. These of course are the maximum and I wouldn't expect any of that amperage not to only not be available, but I wouldn't expect to use that on a basic garage project. The first thing we're going to do is take some masking tape and uh, put six uh, markings on it evenly spaced um, and they're going to be um, the positive and the negative 5 volt, positive and the negative 3.3 volt, the positive and the negative 12 volt rail. Um, make sure they're evenly spaced so it looks nice. You want to be proud of your project and it starts by planning. As you see here, just a good close-up picture of the small drill bit that I initially use. These power supplies are generally made from kind of an aluminum and they are cheap and if you try and drill a large hole at first, you're going to end up binding it, wrecking it, and it's going to look like crap. So as you see here, we've got six very, very small holes and um, now we're going to successively make them larger and larger. So I'll get a medium sized drill bit and then I'll use a large sized drill bit. These holes are for the binding posts that we're going to later on connect the um, 5 volt, 3.3 volt and the 12 volt rail. So they need to be made uh, very clean cut and again we're going to use six of them here. So as you see, I just want to give another example that two of them are much larger diameter than the rest of them. I'm carefully going through. I don't want to just jump from a small one to a large one. I want to make this look right and I don't want to bind this metal or, or ruin it because I wanted to go, uh, I wanted to get it done too fast. So here we have our six holes that we have, um, that I have drilled. And now I'm ready to go ahead and put the binding posts in. But first, I've got to get my wires ready. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick up, uh, let's see here, I believe it's four ground wires. We're going to take a 5-volt uh, wire that's red. We're going to take a yellow 12-volt wire, and we're going to take a peach-colored 3.3-volt wire. It's important to note that the colors may vary on power supply, especially for Dell. So be aware and use a multimeter. It's also important to grab another 5-volt uh, cable and a ground because we're going to load a 10 ohm 10 watt resistor to that wire um, to put a permanent load on there. Some of these power supplies are called switching power supplies and they won't turn on uh, even if they're tripped until an actual load is present. This just uh, becomes energy efficient and that's how they get the E symbol there. <clears throat> Once we go ahead and uh, we take care of the wires that we don't need. I basically just cut them down to about three inches in height and then I used um, some heat shrink tube in order to cover them up. I could have cut them all the way down to the PCB but you know later on if I want to add a 5 volt or a 12 volt um, rail if I think that I need uh, some more amperage for whatever reason I have it available. Um, otherwise, it's clean, and I don't have to worry about short circuits or anything like that. It's pretty well protected um, from internal movements as the power supply gets transferred from the bench, off the bench, um, just general transportation. You will see in the background of that picture, I'm sorry that went by fast, where I have already mounted the safety bending posts. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to next um, splice the wires. These um, are going to then be connected to the binding posts. Um, one wire for one binding post. Um, it is possible to use one black round wire for all the posts. I would not recommend it because you're going to be um, potentially using high amperage on some of these rails. You don't want one wire to go um, even though it's technically possible for uh, on just um, one ground wire. It's a bad idea. Separate them so you have a plus and minus 12 volt, a plus and minus 3.3, and a plus and minus 5 volt. Here we have the heat shrink tubing. I've already soldered the connection to the binding posts and I've used here cable management um, 
so that way it's not only clean but it prevents those wires from moving around um, you might think for a moment because there's a fan there that that's why I went ahead and used a zip tie no it's actually because I don't want those wires to um, move around hit, hit something hot and start melting you know if you're gonna do a professional job and you want to do the best that you can do cable management is important and really critical to anything that you want um, to last long this is the 10 ohm 10 watt resistor that we connected to that extra 5 volt rail I'm gonna go ahead and mount this in the PSU as I will show you a little bit later um, again heat shrink tubing just to make sure those contacts are well protected after I um, had soldered those connections this heat shrink tubing actually worked extremely well for this project um, you could of course use electrical tape it's a bit more messy and a little bit unstable so inside some of these power supplies they can get pretty hot as you see when you take some of them apart they have a large heat sink so I would recommend using heat shrink tubing if possible now the other thing that I should mention is on most power supplies there's actually two switches there's generally uh, an external power switch and then internally this unit will actually not turn on until the special green wire and the ground wire are connected so make sure that this is soldered and heat shrink tubed uh, before you go otherwise as soon as you turn it on the thing won't turn on so that has to be tripped this is the 10 ohm 10 watt resistor I've had it on for five minutes and what I'm testing here is to see if the voltages change and I'm also testing to see if that um, uh, resistor ceramic resistor gets too hot um, this is a good thing to do and please be careful because this is high voltage since I do have it plugged into the mains and I do have it open so just be cautious and here we have the completed project once I've confirmed that the ceramic um, resistor is not getting hot I think it stayed at 89.5 degrees Fahrenheit so excellent temperature these posts I checked all the voltage on the rail they stayed consistent throughout the testing phase so pretty proud of it it's good to go and um, last thing I want to show you is how it stacks up against of course a real professional power supply you might use in a bench on the bench that's my HP 6205C I've used this for quite some time the one advantage of the one on top although it's certainly not controlled and there's no pots for it is that it does provide a lot more amperage than the one on the bottom so that's a big plus thanks for watching